All right then gang, so now I want to move on to the product information for this product page and that's going to be laid out right here. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to dive into using columns in Bulma. So the way Bulma controls layouts is by using Flexbox under the hood and it builds a grid system on top of that whereby we can use either a 12 column grid or a 5 column grid or a 3 column grid, etc. Now, the argument could be made that we could just use our own classes, which make use of the newer CSS grid built right into CSS itself. And we could do that, but by using Bulma and the column classes, we don't have to worry about making those classes ourselves. And also we can use some additional positioning classes Bulma gives us to do things like centralize columns or vertically align them as well. So it's very easy to use. Now, before we make any columns whatsoever, I want to make a new section and a new container for all of this product information. So let me do that. And to do that, we'll say section and then give this a class of section as well. And then inside that, a div with a class of container, which remember brings everything into a central column. Now, the way we use columns in Bulma is by first of all, creating a columns element. So I'm going to create a div and that's going to have a class of columns like so. And then all of our individual columns of content are going to go inside this div. So this columns class surrounds all of the different columns that we actually create. Now I want three bits of content in this section all in a row on the page and each bit of content is going to be contained in its own div element and each one of those will have a class of column. So div dot column like so. So let me just duplicate that a couple of times. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is just for now place a little bit of lorem ipsum in each one of these. So P and then lorem 30 and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it inside each one of these different columns just so we have some content to play with on the screen. If I save it now and view it, we can see automatically it's placed in three columns in equal width on the page. So that's the default behavior. Now we can override that and make each column a different width if we want to. So say for example, we're using a 12 column grid. We're given a load of different classes to control how many of those 12 columns each section or each one of these different divs takes up. So we give it a class of column and also we can give it a width. So for example, I could say is two. And then down here, I could say is seven. And then that adds up to nine, two and seven. We have three columns left. So I could say is three. So this would be the smallest, this the biggest, and this the second smallest. So if I save that now and preview, we can see that. This is two columns of width, this is seven, and this is three. Now notice, when we get down to mobile size screens, they all stack on top of each other automatically because otherwise they're gonna look squashed. We will learn more about changing the width of different columns for different size devices later on, but for now, let's stick to desktop and let's change these a little bit as well. So say for example, I want this to be three, this is going to be five, so that's eight so far. Three plus five is eight. And then down here, we've got four left, so four. Save that. And now we have three columns where the left is quite small, the middle a bit bigger, and then the right a little bit smaller than the middle. Okay, so this is the kind of size I want for our content. So it's pretty simple, right? We have a div with a class of columns to surround the different columns of content. And each column of content has a class of column. If we leave it, then it automatically applies an equal width to each one of the columns. Or we can override that by using these different classes right here, okay, to make up a 12 column grid. Okay, so instead of these paragraph tags, let's do some actual content that we want. So let me delete all of those. And then I'm gonna do inside here an H1. And I'm going to give this a class of is hyphen size hyphen one and also a class of title. And then inside the H1, I'm going to say Docker. That's the name of the coffee that we're going to use right here. And then an H2, and that's going to have a class of is hyphen size hyphen two, also a class of subtitle. And then inside that, it's going to be dark roast. Save that. In fact, let's do a paragraph tag underneath and lorem. 20 save it and preview and okay so that's the content on the left in the middle we're going to have an image we'll come back to that in a second because we don't have the image up here 
And finally, we're going to have the price, a bit of information, and eventually we're going to have a button to add it to the cart. So let me do a div first of all for the price. The class is going to be is hyphen size hyphen four. Remember, this is the text size, and then margin bottom of four. Then we'll do the price inside, which is 1095. And then below that, a paragraph tag with a class of M B hyphen four again margin bottom and then we'll do lorem 10 and tab save it and preview and okay we have that on the right and now we just need that image in the middle so let me drag in another image called product right here again this is on the github repo and this is the product image we want to show in the middle inside this column over here so let me create an image tag and this is going to have a class as well px-6 to give it padding top and bottom and the source is going to be inside the assets folder forward slash product.png the alt is going to be docker coffee image like so if i save this and preview we can see that image right here now that image is not quite in the center of its columns it's over to the left so what i want to do is center that and it's only very subtle this effect but i'm going to give this a class right here which surrounds the image has text centered this works on images as well as text so save that and preview and now we can see it's in the middle so it just pushed it to the right a tiny bit again very subtle now, one of the last things I want to do here is bring this stuff down here in the middle and this down into the middle. Now, I could play around with the padding of each one of these things, but instead I could use some kind of vertical alignment property that Bulma gives us to vertically align all of these things in the center of the row. Now, to do that, all we need to do is come to the columns class that surrounds the whole thing and then give this a class of is-v-centered like so save that and now everything is in the middle vertically of this row and that looks a lot better so that's how to use columns again if we take this smaller you're going to notice the stack on mobile screens we are going to address this kind of width later on because it all looks a bit squashed we'll probably do that in the next lesson but for now on desktop screens that looks pretty good so if we quickly take a look at the Bulma docs, we can see this is the 12 column system we've been using where we have all of these classes from is one all the way to is 12 if you want something to take up 12 columns in width. But I also wanted to point out that if you scroll up, there's different class names that we can use instead for different size grids. So we can use these things right here is three quarters or is two thirds or is half or down here is four fifths. So I would advise you if you want to play around with the grid system to look at the docs a little bit more. Again, the link is going to be in the description right down below. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at how we can change the grid columns and the width of those columns for smaller screens like tablets.